beeper be gone? Time to get an ad lib on Chinny Vision. Okay, so PC gaming isn't a huge part of what we do here on Chinny Vision as I try and navigate the camera tripod there. Yes, we are in the Chinny Vision office, not at the kitchen table because just how things worked out today. We don't do a huge amount of PC coverage. Usually it is games where they've been released on the Amiga ST, Amstrad, Spectrum, Commodore 64, and there's a PC version to show. And when I show those games, I usually run those games on my Amstrad PC 2086 or uh, this Dell DX4 laptop, which is donated to the channel by Beldy. Um, and it is incredibly useful. It's a really nice laptop. It's a D. I haven't reviewed it on the channel because I don't think it's really kind of thing we review. It is just the workhorse now for, for capture when we do PC uh, footage. A little bit of dust on there. Table's not really good for this. I will put it back down there. It's really useful. It's got a hard disk. It's powerful enough to do most things. The only thing it struggles a bit with is the really old stuff where it's just too fast to run it and even when you try and slow it down it doesn't quite work but it's convenient it sits in the drawer um with all my retro stuff so i can just pull it out when i want to use it but the problem is like with all pc stuff unless you have a sound card then you're stuffed now this machine has no iso or pci slots or anything like that in it and even if I was to put a sound card in my Amstrad PC 2086, those things cost a fortune these days. Sound cards are really expensive because suddenly PC gaming is trendy. I mean, I laugh at Amiga owners pushing the prices up of their stuff, but I mean, seriously, nostalgia for PC games? Um, don't get it, but that's, that's me. That's me, but, you know, sound cards costing a fortune. So... You've got a problem and you've got a problem if you get a laptop because you've got no sound on there at all now what you want is some kind of parallel port sound card these were available in the day they were quite um rare and limited compared to a standard uh sound card but they were available but they are now available this is the opl3 lpt fm synthesizer sound card and it comes in this little uh case thing here let's get you in close this costs about 60 pounds and is available on ebay and other vendors online you can just search for opl3 lpt and it optionally comes with this little 3d printed case which just comes off there and what kind of sound card is this i hear you ask well it's an ad lib it uses the OPL3 chip, the Yamaha YMF262, to be precise. The chip used in the Sound Blasters, or the earlier Sound Blasters, and the Ad Lib. But from compatibility, driver wise, uh, regard it as an Ad Lib card. So it has a four channel sound output, although the list I've got here says it's got 18 channels as well. Perhaps it multiplexes them. Dunno. Simple stereo, hard left, centre or hard right. And uh, this, there's a model called the OPL2 sound card as well, which uses the older chip. Um, this has reduced latency from this and a slightly improved sound. And there uh, you got a bodge resistor on the back there. And apparently that, that bodge resistor there uh, goes to the strobe line. It improves compatibility with some computers that were having problems running this on the back there you've got to you need to give it power this thing does need to be powered it can't draw power from the computer you've got a stereo headphone out which is amplified and you've got potential potentiometer there that gives you uh, allows you to adjust the volume and that gets quite loud actually on the unit itself get you in focus there little reset button there which you will need because if you reset the computer, sometimes it will let le end up playing the last note. It was playing just hanging on to it until you hit the reset button. Um, 
there's a should be a genuine Yamaha chip there. I can't see that should be a gen genuine Yamaha YMF262. Do we have a date code? I can't see there, but that is yeah, that is a genuine Yamaha. And it's all very tidy design there. And so you get quite a bit of bang for your buck on there. If the, if these had been more widely available back in the day, they would have made an absolute killing for laptops and things where sound like this this Dell here is a really well spec laptop. And yet the one thing it doesn't have with its DX4 processor and all its memory and large hard disk is any sound capability. Um, this you know, it wasn't standard at all for 486 laptops to have sound built in, let alone uh, a decent chip like the Yamaha here. Uh, the chip here can't play um, samples or anything like that. It is just chip music. This costs about £60. My copy came from Shenzhen in China. I think you can get them direct from Belgium where they're made, but this the prices seem to be about the same and the, the seller on eBay seem to have some good reviews. So that's where I got my copy from. Your mileage may, of course, vary. Um, this could well be a, a clone. I don't know. Um, not an original. But so far, so good with it. Of course, it simply plugs into the back of your computer, like... Yay! And then you're going to plug in your power supply and your uh, headphone out, which is, as I say, amplified. And be warned, this thing does get very, very loud. Of course, the thing it does mean is it's not nice and tidy inside the machine. And uh, because the bottom is exposed, you want to make sure it's not shorting out on anything beneath it. As I say, you're going to have to power it externally and you're going to have to have a wire running out for the headphone jack uh, for the line out or headphones or whatever you decide to use. But apart from that, it's, it's not a bad solution. And it's giving you sound in places where basically you don't have sound at the moment. So being a PC device, obviously it needs drivers and your standard AdLib drivers are not going to work because it's expecting it on the ISA bus, the ISA bus, and you've got the device on the parallel port. Clearly that's not going to work. There's, you've got two options. You've got the AdLibd software, and you see on the screen here, I've got... This is the supplied software. You have to download it, but it's the supplied software. Adlipt requires a 386 or better, but will intercept the ISA bus for Adlib commands, uh, communications, and then redirect them to the parallel port. And that works pretty well. There can be on slower machines a little bit of latency or delay, but not much. Um, I've seen people complain they play Castle, Wol Wol Castle Wolfenstein. Sorry. And uh, there's been little stutters and things, but not much. Remember, you're, this is a device that's going into machines that have no sound cards, so it's not like you're comparing it to a, you know, Sound Blast AW32 or, or something, because if you're on a laptop, you've got no other choice. Your other option, and this will work with any PC from an 8086 up, is AD Patch. AD Patch will patch a game that has AdLib commands, uh, AdLib support in it to work with your uh, new sound card. Doesn't work for everything, but it, you need to use that for either machines that don't have a 386 or, or you know, 286 or 86, or games that use protected mode, uh, 386 protected mode. Games that use 386 protected mode need to be patched using the ad patch. We will see that a little bit later on. So once you've installed the AdLib driver, you can run the OPL3 test, and this is what happens. Detects the sound card and happily runs. And it has that familiar Sound Blaster 16 AdLib sound that so impressed all us Amiga owners when we came over to the PC. Anyway, in practice, right, let's run a game. So here's Nigel Mansell. You may have seen the review of this. Or it may not be out yet. I don't know. I have done a review of this. Here we go. This is a standard game, no protected mode. So AdLibt works straight off the bat.
Dalek Attack, which we reviewed, oh, a long time ago now, but here we go, let's try that because I had it on the computer. And I've been trying various games, and here's Krusty's Super Fun House. And I've not noticed on any of these games the reported stuttering or anything like that. Perhaps you have to be running games that are taxing the system far more. But Krusty's Super Fun House is running superbly here on this Dell 486. If the game does feature samples, you won't hear anything. Um, it just won't play back. So, we talked about patching. So here's what you do. You either patch the game executable or you find the DLL file that has the support for AdLib in it. So it's the SimCity 2000. I found the AdLib DLL in the sound directory. I patched it, which on this 486 takes no time at all. And then we go into the install utility. And we're going to select AdLib. And there you go, it's verified it. And I don't think we're able to do sound effects as well. Tried Sound Blast, no, it needs to be AdLib. Uh, you can't go selecting things like Sound Blaster, it just won't work. So let's boot up SimCity, which will look a little bit grim on this capture because my PC capture isn't really... Op well, it's not going to work for SVGA very well, really. If anyone's got any HD capture solutions for SVGA output, let me know in the comments below. Off-the-shelf ones, not ones that... In need wiring and things but it sounds like SimCity yes you may have been using general MIDI when you, did you use general MIDI on SimCity 2000 possibly but it doesn't matter look listen to this it sounds perfectly fine exactly as SimCity su should sound And as I mentioned, if you reset the machine, you get the last note the sound card was playing repeated over and over again until you hit the reset button on the card or remove and reapply the power. A little thing, I don't think they can get around this, unfortunately, because, of course, um, it's, it's not working like a normal sound card would. It's having to do special things, and yeah, it will hold on to that last note. Very minor gripe. So, what do I think of the OPL3 LPT? I think it's great. I think it's going to give... Well, it gives you sound in places where you can't have sound and gives you, for £60, ad-lib slash sound blaster-like sound on any computer with an LPT port. It doesn't support audio within Windows 3 and presumably not 95 either, but... It, as I say, it gives you audio in places where you simply wouldn't have audio before. No support isn't 100% for every last game. Yes, for protective mode games, you can have that little bit of fiddling around with the patching, but it's fairly painless. you just got to find the file you need to patch or just patch the executable. 
basically if that's all that's there. But you get ad lib sound and there's no other solutions out there. Perhaps someone will come up with a more elaborate solution uh, with better sound cards, the Gravis ultrasound and things like that. Who knows? But this really is one of the only games in town at the moment. And it's going to make a huge difference to me when reviewing PC games. For £60, for ad-lib support, for a lot of the games you, you've got, um, up, to, up to a certain point, obviously, in terms of age, I think, well, you know, it's probably going to be, unless you've already got a sound card, an essential purchase.